In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at five new features that I really like in the final release of the year for Home Assistant, the 2024.12 update. Check it out. What's going on guys, I hope you're all doing well. Let's kick this thing off then with my first new feature and it's a change to scenes. If you've ever previously made use of scenes, you'll know that whenever you select one of your existing scenes, it will actually automatically activate it. Maybe you only wanted to make a small change to it, like changing its name. Well, any kind of change that you actually made would activate the scene and this would definitely be an issue if you were doing it late at night and it turned on all of your lights and started opening and closing your blinds. As of the latest release, this has been remedied by the inclusion of two modes. The first mode is the mode that you get entered into if you select an existing scene, which is the review mode. Inside of the review mode, you're able to make changes to a scene's name, its icon, its area, and you can also remove devices from the scene, all without causing the scene to actually activate. If you want to take full control of the scene and start modifying what the actual scene does, so things like changing the light's brightness, its colour temperature, or modifying other devices within your scene, you'll need to enter the live edit mode. This is done by just simply selecting live edit at the top and inside of there you'll have full control of your scene. There's also another nice small change to scenes, especially for those of you that are YAML inclined, but using the UI you can now simply select the three dots and edit the scene fully in YAML if that's something that you wanted to do. These little changes are all really nice quality of life improvements for scenes and they're particularly great especially if you were previously a scene user. I'd love to know in the comments below if you do make use of scenes or if you've never made use of them so let me know in the comments below. Up next we've got my second feature and it's voice assistant fallback. If you've been using voice with home assistant you'll know that you've had two main options for setting up your voice assistant. You've had the option of using the built-in home assistant intents and sentences which are great for running on device local commands, basic smart home commands, turn on off devices, get information about devices and those kinds of queries. If you've wanted to do anything more in depth and more in detail, then you'd need to use an LLM such as ChatGPT and using these LLMs you're able to do external commands which will give you information that your home doesn't know about. Maybe you want to know a particular question or maybe you want to ask it something about a device in a particular way. LLMs are great for this kind of thing and they can provide you with additional information but they are a lot slower than the local built-in intents and there is usually a price attached to using these services. Using voice assistant fallback, we can combine these two different approaches into one service that gives us the speed of the locally processed commands and the flexibility of the LLMs. So now when you type it a question or you ask it a question with your voice, it will first check with home assistant whether it can understand and process this locally. And if it does, you pretty much instantly get your response. And if it's something it doesn't understand or something it can't process and work out, it will then pass it to the LLM, which will provide you with your answer. This one's a big step forward for voice assistants and if it interests you and you want to see more then make sure you check out the Home Assistant live stream event on December 19th where they'll be showing off some really cool stuff that I promise you you do not want to miss. Moving on then to feature number three and we've got a revamp to the integration quality scale. The integration quality scale is used to identify how well an integration works within Home Assistant. An integration gets scaled based on its reliability, its documentation and its code quality. We previously had three different tiers for integrations which rank them from silver, gold and platinum with platinum being the highest and silver being the lowest but with this new revamp there's a few extra ones added. We now have bronze which acts as the new lowest tier within the integration quality scale and we have four additional tiers which aren't scaled which are used to represent things that don't necessarily fit into the standard scaling system. What's really nice about this new revamp is the fact that there's more documentation and more information available to people wanting to develop and create integrations. There's now a clear path of what they need to do in order to achieve a specific tiered rank. The other really nice thing about this revamp is the fact that the integration cards inside of Home Assistant will now also reflect what rank they are and they've also got a nice little visual indicator which has a cool little animated effect. If you're wondering why this is a big deal for us Home Assistant users, the fact that this is now publicly shown on a card is definitely more of an incentive for integration maintainers and developers to actually put in a bit more work and just get it up to that next rank because it's publicly shown. Moving along then with feature number four and we've got camera snapshots. 
There's a new change with camera entities that provides you with the download button. So whenever you're on a camera entity, you'll now see this download button, which will allow you to directly download a still from the camera that you're looking at and just save it to whatever device you happen to be using. My fifth and final feature then for this video is the music assistant integration. The music assistant integration is now an official home assistant integration. So you no longer need to use hacks in order to use the integration, which allows you to expose your speakers to music assistant servers. It's nice that this is now an official integration as you won't need to use hacks to get it. And it also paves the way for music assistant to eventually become an official home assistant add-on. And there we go guys, that's been a quick look at five new features that I really liked. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons, and if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create videos like this, then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me, all in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.